everyone. Will Brink here, BrinkZone.com, AlphaJoeCoffee.com. Um, today I'm going to review the uh, Bolton Blackbird e-bike, which you can see the picture of um, in the video started. And uh, I'm also going to review it briefly, and I'm going to compare it to the um, Rad Rover, which I had prior to the Blackbird. And I think it's um, a useful comparison for people because a lot of people maybe um, are looking at those those two bikes, uh, and you know, there's a pretty big price differential. They may look really similar, so I think I think it'll be a useful comparison to people sort of understand what maybe some of the uh, the differences are. And uh, what I did was um, I was going to do this video outside, but uh, sound wise, it just wasn't very good, and it was too echoey and birds chirping and cars going by. So what I decided to try to do was to do the review from my office, my my messy office here with a, a video I took outside of the um, Blackbird so that we could sort of walk through it a little bit and people get a sense of what I was talking about. So let's talk about the, the, uh, the pluses, the, the pros, and there's, there's all, you know, there's, there's some minor issues with the Blackbird, pretty much all of them, which I think have been addressed anyway. So, uh, and none of them are, are deal breakers, but you know, I want to give you the, the pluses, some of the pluses and the minor minuses, and uh, we'll conclude with that. So um, let's talk about, uh, start, you know, with the, the stuff that obviously makes uh, uh, e-bikes, e-bikes really what is separate from a regular bike, which of course is the, is the motor, uh, the controller and the battery. I mean, those are the, those are the three main components of what makes an e-bike an e-bike. If you were to, you know, not have those, you just have a bicycle. So let's talk about those, those major components. Um, the, uh, Blackbird has a 750 watt nominal motor. <clears throat> we'll get to nominal, uh, what that actually means compared to the um, rad in a second. So it has a 750 watt nominal motor, which, which can peak out at around 1200 watts. Um, you have a, a powerful, uh, I'll, I'll put some of the stats below the video. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a little frog here. I'll put the stats. I'll, you don't have to go into the size. The battery um, is is larger than the Rad Rover. The controller is quite powerful. I believe it's 25 amps. So, so the everything on the bike on, on the on the Blackbird um, is is a, is a big step up from the the Rad Rover. Uh, I, if we go through the the motor, um, it's got a lot of power. If you go through the, for example, the front fork, uh, really impressed with the front fork, which Let's we'll do a little video. We'll go through the video in a second. Um, the brakes, the difference in the brakes, they are hydraulic brakes. They're 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 fantastic brakes um, compared to your your typical mechanical brakes. Uh, so everything I think that that uh, Bolton really put the 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 focus and the money into the really making a performance oriented bike. The the Rad Rover um, looks like it's performance oriented, but it's really meant to sort of putz along. Uh, it, it's not great off-road. Uh, it's okay, but it doesn't have it doesn't have the really have the power. Um, the the Bolton has a lot of power. In fact, if anything, uh, I, I would say it's not it's not a great beginner's bike. Or if 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 it is somebody's first e-bike and they're not used to e-bikes and powered bikes, um, my advice would be to definitely to <clears throat> turn the. You can uh, adjust the power down. I would adjust the power down. Uh, until you got used to it, and then you could work your way up to to full power. But the the throttle, for example, on full power, on the Bolton is head snapping, um, <clears throat> and you could, um, I think you could get yourself into trouble actually pretty quickly with this bike if you're not used to how fast this thing can can actually go uh, from zero to about almost thirty, about twenty eight. You know, if you uh, <clears throat> go through the codes, um, so. The, the power, uh, the, the ride is actually quite nimble for the size and the weight of the bike. It's actually a pretty nimble bike, uh, especially compared to that, the Rad Rover. Um, battery life, um, interestingly enough, I don't do a great job of tracking battery life mileage-wise, I have to be honest with you. Um, but the battery life actually, even though it's a much bigger battery, because you've got so much more power, and you just have a, a tendency to use that power because it's just a lot of fun. 
um, I actually tend to go through the battery probably a little quicker than I thought I would. Uh, I think that, uh, you, again, you, you really can't, you sort of have to do apples to apples uh, with a Rad Rover. And I, I probably got more battery life <clears throat> from the Rover, but that was because I just didn't ride it, uh, maybe use that power, all that power uh, as much as I do with the Blackbird. Um, component wise, I'm not really that up on, on brands in terms of, of the quality, the brand and types of components used on the Rad Rover that somebody could go through and say, you know, for this amount of money, the Rad Rover is about, uh, when I bought it, $1,400, everything's gone up. I think there's now is like 1600. The, the Blackbird, when I bought it was, I think about 2,400. Uh, now it's gone up a bit. Um, so you're talking about about a thousand dollar difference. So the question for someone would obviously be, um, is there a thousand dollars worth of difference uh, across the board uh, in the Blackbird versus the Rover? And the answer would be definitely yes. Uh, it, like I say, it really is a different experience. Um, the one thing I really like about the Blackbird is the torque, the low end torque. It has a lot of low end torque that you can really use off road. Um, I, I really like uh, appreciate the front fork on the um, on the Bolton. It's it's a really it's a it's a legit you know uh, performance type fork that can uh, really take you know heavy hits and go over trails and and you know big lumps and bumps and divots and all that. Uh, you can tune it once you really tune the that front fork to the way you want it. Uh, it it's it's fantastic, and you'll also see. And we'll, I'm going to bring the video in in a second so we can uh, go through this a little bit. You'll see that the the way that the uh, the tires attached to the the front fork is with four big bolts. It's not a it's not a quick release type thing. Um, which if you want a quick release, obviously the Bolton is not the bike for you. But if you want a really rugged front fork. Uh, that will definitely not let you down or, you know, fold under pressure or break or something in, you know, the worst possible time. Uh, that Bolton uh, front fork is is definitely what you want. Uh, I've put about about a thousand miles on it. Uh, and I've really put it, you'll see when I go through the video, you'll, you'll see it. I, I put it through its paces. I mean, I've, you'll see there's mud splatters all over. I got to clean the poor thing. Uh, there's actually even some, a bit of rust on the, uh, on the brakes. Um, which I have to, I need to take off. And that's because I've been going through puddles and mud and, you know, there's a, uh, just west of me, there's some really large parks uh, with, with really cool trails. I mean, we're talking 50,000 acres when, you know, when I say large parks, I mean, really big parks. Uh, you spend all day in there and I actually got lost uh, in one of them. Um, bit of a side story. Uh, I learned the hard way about the battery life. Uh, when, it, when the bike was new, I had about 50% in one of the batteries. And I thought, you know, that's big battery like this, plenty of power. I can go, you know, bomb around for a couple hours in the park. Uh, so I go into the park. Um, I get lost. Uh, it's turning dark. I realize that the, um, that the park's going to close. And so if I don't get out of the park to my car, they're going to lock me out of my car. And, um, I was about, uh, about 15 miles away. So I'm lost and I'm flying around at full power, trying to get out of the park, find my way out of the park. Well, I basically used all the battery up. I, popped out of the park too late and I had to ride and it started to rain and then it started to get dark. And so I had to ride about 15 miles uh, on this heavy bike with no power in the rain, in the dark. Um, and that was no fun. Um, so I have to say one of the first things I did was bought another battery. I have two batteries and at about 50%, I swapped them out. And um, the bike with all the stuff I have on it is probably with a chain and probably close to a hundred pounds. So uh, I will say that 15 miles um, without any power was not uh, was quite a workout. I guess that's what I'm trying to get to. Um, what else can we say? So yeah, I think across the board, the Bolton. If if you just want to cruise along on on hard top and you don't plan to take the use the the Bolton the the Blackbird for what I think uh, uh, it really excels at is you know actually taking off road and going through trails and really having some fun with it. Um, you know it does that fine. It, it you know I probably use it. 80% of the time, you know, on just basic cruising down blacktop and it's fine for that. And I enjoy it for that too. Um, but I really appreciate, like I say, you can really can take, take the blackbird, um, off road and pretty much put it through its paces. And you'll see that, uh, you'll see all the mud splatter and like I say, even, there's even a little rust that I have to get off. Um, but I have been for the thousand miles, if not a lot of miles, the thousand miles, I will say have been really putting this, this guy through its, uh, paces, uh, in a way that, um, when I tried to do that with the, um, uh, with the Rad Rover, 
just wasn't happening. It didn't have the low end torque. Uh, I didn't really trust the front fork enough to really, you know, uh, use it harshly and and uh, as as I would with the Blackbird. So I think the Blackbird is really set up. It's really set up for um, performance. It also has the Blackbird. Also, just has a lot of. I'm probably going to miss some things. So you'll want to read the the description. It has a lot of little things that they've added into it that just add up to a really really nice experience. Um, there's a there's a torque sensor versus um, the way the the way the the uh, uh, um, rad is set up. Uh, it just it's just using sensors um, inside the the rotor, and it senses when you're going by. I think it's I think it's an eight sensor rotor. But anyway, the 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 Bolton has an actual torque sensor, and and it's noticeable. It it really does add. The, the harder you push, the more it, it senses that you're you're doing that and picks up power, and the power will actually modulate itself, you know, to the amount of pressure that you're putting on those pedals, and that that's actually really nice. It's no, it's a noticeable difference. Um, small things like they added a um, uh, the seat post can be adjust, pushed down. If you're the kind of person when you get on your bike and you you tend to swing your your leg over the seat, well, it has an adjustable seat post that you just push down. Uh, and then when you get on the bike, you hit a lever and it pops up right to whatever seat uh, post the uh, height you set it to. Uh, I don't use it. I actually, um, whether it's just because I'm short or whatever, but I personally tend to go put my foot through over the lowest part of the frame and jump on the seat. So I don't actually use it, but I think it's a really nice touch, especially if you're maybe you're a taller person who tends to just throw their leg over the, uh, over the seat first. Um, I actually took the only modifications I made to the bike was I actually moved the seat post. Uh, I actually am using a, um, a, a, a seat post that, that shock absorbing type seat post. Uh, I added uh, a gel seat cover to the seat. Um, and so that really makes a nice comfortable ride uh, for bumpy, you know, uh, for uh, bad backs and uh, things like that. So there's a lot of, like I say, little touches across the board in the, in the Blackbird that I think really makes it nice. Um, now for some of the negatives, I, I do want to say I, I, so I had a long conversation with the owner, uh, at black, uh, at Bolton was Kyle and, um, pretty much everything, all of my issues, minor issues with the bike, uh, have been addressed as he said in, in later bikes. Um, I had one of the early bikes and, um, I think like I said, he said pretty much everything's been addressed. Uh, so none of them, even if they weren't addressed, I, I don't think they would be deal breakers. But one of the issues um, is, well, the front fender, there's a, and I'll show it to you in the video. So hold on. I know you're saying, well, I, I, you're, you're giving me descriptions and, and I want to see what you're talking about. And we'll get to it in just a second. But the, the front fender, there's a gap uh, between the bracket and the screw that comes with it for me, I just could not, it wasn't long enough to, to get the screw in the back and I have to go get a longer screw. Uh, I think he, that basically something he said that's been addressed, but you'll see it. I'm riding on one screw and it, it kind of bounces around. Um, okay. Apparently that's been addressed. Uh, another minor issue was the front light. Um, you can't tilt it down because you want to, obviously you want the, the, the light to tilt down in front of you so you can see where you're going. Well, the way the bracket on the light is it won't, it just goes straight ahead. Um, that again, he said has been, has been addressed. Now I don't really care because I have a separate light you'll see, um, on the handlebar. So I have two lights. So one's pointing down the right in front of me to see what I'm doing. The other one on the bike itself is going that way straight ahead. So it, it's not a deal breaker to me. And he said, it's been, uh, it's been addressed. Um, another issue, this has not been addressed and I don't know if it, ha it doesn't need to be, but one of the complaints I've seen online from people is the way that the battery the way it's 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 bracketed on the frame, it it wobbles a little bit. Um, I think some people are worried that like that wobble or that slight movement could have it fall off or break. Some people will I've seen have add like a couple of straps um, to it. I haven't done anything, and I really have banged around on that bike pretty hard, and it has not budged. And I don't personally, it doesn't really bother me. I'm not worried about it. Um, but that's that's one of the issues I've seen other people complain about. Um, I think it's a non-issue. Finally, which um, this could be a bit of a deal breaker, but again, we'll get to to, to Bolton's uh, customer service. One of the issues the Blackbird had apparently in some of the early Blackbirds is it would randomly just shut itself off. 
uh, you'd be, you know, riding along, you'd get started and the bike just turns off as if you like press the button screen goes dead, no assist, everything dies. It, it only does it. It does it randomly. Uh, it does it more on some bikes than others. Um, and basically, apparently, according to Kyle, that is a, uh, the older, bad, the older original batteries, that it's a switch. Uh, and all you got to do is basically pop the switch out, put a new one in. Uh, he's sending me a couple, so I'll update if that takes care of it. I, I hope it does. Um, and that, you know, if that was not fixable, yeah, that, that was kind of, that's annoying. I have to, I have to say, but here's the, here's the, the big point of this, uh, to me, which is machines, any machine, bikes, cars. I had a Ford uh, Explorer, for example, it was brand new Ford Explorer at 15,000 miles. It started to give me a bunch of trouble and Ford would not make it right. Uh, they would not honor their warranty properly and they ran me around and I will never buy another Ford again because of that. Um, Kyle, on the other hand, has been nothing but great with customer service. Um, in fact, um, when I first bought the bike and I wanted to change out the seat post, they had a, a typo on their website. And so the I purchased the a new seat post based on the typo and it didn't fit. Uh, and all I did was, you know, I called up Bolton and Kyle said, look, uh, you know, sorry about that. We'll fix it. And uh, he sent me out a new, a, a brand new seat post of the one that I had purchased and to replace it. And that's the kind of thing that really matters to me, uh, customer service. Any machine can go can have its problems. Um, the issue is, will the company make it right? And I would say that my experience with Bolton and other people I've seen online, they have a, a Facebook page, has been consistently positive that if there's a problem with bikes, whatever it may be, Bolton will make it right. And that is really the important part. So I'll get these switches. Hopefully that I'll put them in my batteries. I got two of them. Uh, and hopefully that will do it. Let me bring in this video and you'll see what some of the stuff I was talking about as far as the little gap, um, the light, uh, actually how, how you'll see how much I've obviously used this. Uh, okay. Let me bring this guy in and hopefully all I have to do is go and hit the start button and hopefully we can watch this together. Okay. So starting from back to front, maybe you can see that rust. Look at all the mud on my, on my bike. Okay. Uh, there is, there's the fork. You see those big bolts those big thick bolts. I wanted to stress that. Uh, there's the light. That's as far as it, it will go. It only goes straight ahead, which, you know, again, supposedly this has all been addressed. And there's that little bracket thing that I was uh, talking about. And that does kind of bang around. And I just have to get a longer screw. I mean, that's not a big deal. And again, my understanding, that's all been addressed. You can see my lights and stuff. Let me put a freeze on that. So you can see the, the lights I have on the top there um, pointing down. I also have a phone holder for my GPS and I have a horn. So and I have a bag, uh, and you can see that that bike's pretty, uh, I got it pretty decked out. Um, ton of fun, though. I have to say, um, I, I was not, you know, completely sure. Look at all the, you can also see all the mud uh, on the bottom. So like I say, I really, I put a thousand miles on, but I can tell you that the, the, that uh, probably uh, 300 of those were are banging around these big parks um, in uh, Palm Beach, uh, going past alligators, and I almost ran over a snake, or should I say snake almost ran me off the road, but Good times. Um, let's see. Is there anything else that I video here? No, I think that's it. So we'll stop there. Um, but yeah, I, I the, so I, I, when I went from, I think the the Rad Rover, you know, is a very typical um, sort of starter bike, beginner's bike. And I thought I have no complaints. I was happy with my Rad Rover. Uh, it 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 did everything I wanted it to do as an introductory bike. Um, but I. Definitely, as after I rode it for a while, I was just very ready to, to move up to something with uh, more power. And, you know, the, like I say, it, they might look sort of like similar, you know, aggressive, fat tire type bikes. But um, when I was ready to move up, I, I did a lot of research, like a lot of people, and I kept coming back to that that Blackbird. Um, and, uh, I, of course, I was thinking to myself, again, you know, um, you know, it's a, about a thousand dollar difference. I mean, is it really going to be a thousand dollars different bike? And the answer is, like I say, across the board, it is uh, from from the motor to the brakes, to the battery, to all the small touches, to um, uh, the rideability. Uh, it, it's a very it's much more nimble than the um, than the Rad Rover is, too. And I and again, for me, you know, going, wanting to actually do some trails and that kind of thing. Let's uh, let's get rid of this bike. So me actually wanting to do some trails and, and really, you know, bomb around, uh, that also made makes a big difference. So let's, to close out, before I finish, I just, one thing I want to say about the, the Rover, 
that rad has been a little bit uh, playing with the facts that I don't want to say, you know, uh, they're not lying, but so rad basically claims that they've got a 750 watt motor. And then you would say, well, okay, the um, Bolton has a 750 watt motor. Here's the difference. So the rad Rover peaks at full at the highest it goes is 750. That's peak power. It's actually a 500 watt nominal motor. It's not a 750 nominal motor. The rad, Ro uh, the, sorry, the Bolton has a 750 nominal motor, which will peak at about 1200 Watts. If you um, disconnect the limiter, uh, which can be done easily. And so it, it's, it's a little disingenuous on rad's part. It's not, it, I mean, technically you could call it a 750 watt motor, which is what they're doing. But if you get confused and you look at them on paper and say, well, they've go, both got uh, a 750 watt motor and what's the difference. It's a big difference. And I will tell you that uh, the, the side, the motor difference, and along with the, the more powerful controller and the bigger battery, it, it ride a bit night and day power wise. I mean, uh, um, really is, uh, the, the, the Bolton's got lots of power on tap, lots of low end torque, um, and will do, you know, close to 30. So, uh, that's the difference there, which I think does confuse people. I was a little confused about it. Again, I had to go look around and say, well, if they're both claiming to be, you know, 750, uh, watt motors, then, you know, what am I going to notice different, uh, differently when I, when I ride them? And so looking into it, um, I, I saw what rad did and, and I think, yeah, you know, it's, it's, yeah, I guess you could say it's intellectually dishonest, but it's not untrue. It is a 750 watt motor, but it's, it's like I say, that's the difference. It is not, it's actually a 500 watt nominal motor. And the difference, like I say, uh, is quite a bit. Uh, I would add that, um, Bolton also makes a, an upgrade for the Rad Rover to get more power out of it. And that is you can change, they make a controller, a more a, a control that allows more juice to, to flow to that motor uh, from that battery, uh, which you can upgrade the Rad Rover if you just want to get a little bit more power. And that's almost what I was going to do. I was actually on the Bolton page looking to order the, um, the upgrade to the Rad. And then I saw that the the um, uh, Blackbird was on sale, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna jump to that. So, there's my review. Hopefully, that helps. Uh, I do not think you could go wrong um, with Blackbird. Uh, like I say, the the minor issues that that I showed you, um, all of which would not be a deal breaker. I'd still want the bike, but my understanding is they've all been addressed anyway in in newer models. I think people really do have to understand. Um, I think well, company. I know. I don't think I know because. I deal with the same thing. Companies are just under a lot of pressure to get things. Um, the, the supply chain issues because of COVID in China are really, really stressing companies out. I actually, the, my Bolton was six months overdue from the date that I had purchased it. And now my understanding, I think they're even longer out to, for you to order uh, some of their bikes. Some of them, I, I know they have, but some of them, I think you actually are waiting quite a while. So uh, I think it's possible, uh, you know, that that quality control might be might have gotten a bit stressed on on some of those early uh those early blackbirds that's you know just my my conjecture but um that's that's about it so uh hope that helps and uh if you have a blackbird or some other bike that um you enjoy uh you know put your comments in below and uh, i'll see you guys all on the brink zone